Well, hello and welcome to this week's Suffer Club podcast. My name is Aaron and this one is the first one. This has been in the works for a very long time. It's been something that I've been sitting on waiting patiently because I knew it had to be launched at a, at a certain time. Uh, I can only handle so much bandwidth and I figured it was time to launch it. So the idea behind the Suffer Club podcast is we are going to travel around and capture stories uh, from people that have a lot more knowledge than I do in just pushing yourself. It all won't be around sports, but a lot of it will be around sports. Um, Our goal is just to help bring knowledge. It really all it is. Um, And so if you would love to be on the podcast, always reach out to us. We would love to chat with you. But on this first one, uh, I want to kind of set a precedence of what the Suffer Club podcast is about. We really are about um, pushing ourselves and finding out who we really are, what we're really made of. I, I don't think in life, um, let me say this, in life it's hard to kind of push yourself and find what you're made of because there is a extremely uh, vulnerable and fragile state that sometimes it's hard to bounce back from. In business, if you push yourself and you lose everything, well, dang, that is hard to kind of come back from. And sports allows you to push yourself to really realize what you are, who you are, what you're made of. You can pick your head back up and still go on with your life if you fail. So that's why I have focused so much in sports and in in the, in the sports that I am in, cycling and running, I have just decided to push myself and really gut myself to find out how deep I can go and how much pressure I can hold because at some point in time in life, it's not going to be easy, right? It's, it's just not. You're going to be dealt with things that you're not, um, it, it just cards that you're not willing to play or did not want to play, but you have to play those. That's life. In sports and in running, at a certain point, I can sit my butt on the ground, right, and and just stop, but I don't want to. Uh, that's the moment where I drive my stake in the ground and really find out what I'm made of. And so that's a long introduction. Let's get into this first topic. Um, so a, a while back, I, I have, um, let me start over. Uh, I tried to learn how to unlearn. Um, there, I have some bad habits, which everybody does. And I just wanted to try to figure out how to unlearn those. And through all of the research that I did months of research, um, you can't unlearn the process of unlearning is not, it's not a doable thing, but I did find out how to unlearn. It wasn't labeled unlearning. It's just rewiring. Uh, the idea is Our brain hardwires in things out of repetition. And the more we can repeat and do repetition of that thing, it becomes hardwired into our brain. That's why depression is so difficult to overcome because it hardwires itself into the brain. These negative thoughts compound upon negative thoughts, and it's what your brain automatically goes to. It's a protection mechanism. We'll get into in a later video about your brain and how to trick it. But in this first one, uh, I just want to talk about programming your default mode. That's the idea behind this. That's the the wrapping of this story is programming your default mode. What does that mean? Well, programming the default mode is when you boot up, think of this, when you boot up a computer, it automatically goes back to its home state. And for me in my brain, I want my default mode to be to keep moving. I want my default mode to be attack the challenge. I want my default mode to be, well, we'll just keep going. And uh, a few weeks ago, I had a crash in my bike race and I had a flat tire. I ran back to the pits. I pumped it up. I kept going. I had multiple people tell me that is just dumb. Why, Why were you keeping going? Well, it's it's me hardwiring my default mode. It's it has nothing to do with the race. It's my default mode. My default mode only gets set. Now understand this, your default mode only gets set when it is difficult. Okay? That's the hard part. 
The only way to hardwire your default mode is to have a crash, to have a flat, to keep going, to have another flat, to keep going, and then get on another bike and keep going. That is the only way to hardwire the default mode. That's the difficult part of this. The only way to hardwire your default mode, and I'm really driving this home because I want you to understand, the only way to hardwire your default mode is in the crappy times. It is. It's the same way for depression and in the mental negativity that uh, that comes into our brain. It gets hardwired in those hard times. It just does. And if we can take, we can do the same way and hardwire our default mode to be, I'm not going to stop. I can handle this. I can handle this. And so some of the uh, some of the ways that I have hardwired my brain to keep going, because this is not who I always was, understand. The Suffer Club came out of uh, a rare season in my life, and I this knowledge and this drive and, and passion that I have, I want to pass it along. I think everyone can learn this. This is not who I was. It's not who I've always been. Um, and I think you can learn it. But I think the way that I hardwired myself is I didn't just one day crash and flat and, and all build up to keep going, right? It was the small wins. So for me, what I have done is I have built a season and built a routine of small wins. I do small little victories that build confidence that will allow me to take on larger challenges. And so for me, I have I have a routine of small wins when I'm having a bad day. I just do. I have a few things that I automatically go to when life sucks. And so for me, uh, I have learned in my brain, I can change the way that I think. I can change the way that life feels around me by, by just doing these small wins, stacking small wins. Uh, and so the next thing that I have done is I have learned to focus on the wins and losses. That is extremely important. There's a massive amount of data and I'm a big data junkie. You'll hear a ton about data in the in the this podcast, but I am a big data junkie. Our wins hold data. Our wins hold data that will rep will allow us to replicate those wins. Our losses actually hold more data than our wins. Our losses, if we can focus on those, will give away the secrets to how to get back to winning. I value the losses as much, if not even more, than the wins. Because I will get back to the winning spot. That's that's who I am. But the losing spot, I don't want to go back there. So if I can focus on the w- losing spot and realize, okay, I made this mistake, which then got me here, or I made this mistake, which then was this mistake, which then led me to this, I won't do those two, two things again. So that's why I believe the negative, the losses hold more data than the positives. And it's very, very valuable to focus on your wins and losses. Focus on those. Study those. Like there is data in there. There is basic information that will allow you to avoid those losses and get back to the wins. The next thing is the why. This is probably the most important thing in any any sport anything you're doing in life is understanding the why understanding why you're doing what you're doing why did i flat and keep going well it's because it's who i am it's who i want to be it's a foundational principle that i want etched in the being of aaron beaver i'm not a quitter I'm not a, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be digging a hole. I'm not a quitter. I'm going to reach that, that point. I could be drawing. I'm not a quitter. I could be doing anything. I'm not a quitter. The only way that I establish that and that why becomes a reality, it becomes sewn into the fabric of who I am, is I don't quit, right? So the moment that I quit... The unfortunate is I become a quitter. I know that is a hard line, but it's just, it's my, it's my line. It will be very difficult for me to quit. And I have quit at things and I regretted those. 
And I think the regret is more painful than the moving, than the keeping going. And so for me, that is a big why. So my challenge for you in this podcast is find your why, whatever you're doing. If it's business, find your why. It will allow you to keep going when it sucks. If it's running, find your why. I have multiple whys. I don't think one why is a one why fits all. It's not. Because when it gets really, really hard, that first why, you're going to find holes in it. And it's not going to be a strong enough why. But for me, I have multiple whys. And some of them get very personal. Uh, Some of them get very um, deep. Those are my last resort whys. But I've got them in here. Um, And... I was reading David Goggins' book, and if it, just know, like, it's a phenomenal book, okay? Uh, and by reading, I mean I was listening to his his uh, audiobook. Uh, but man, it is great. The first six chapters are difficult. They're just gonna make you uh, deal with emotions that I don't think a lot of people were prepared for. But seriously, it is a phenomenal book. But he talked about his why, and um, I had been focusing on this a lot before, but it it. But the, some of the things that he said just broke open this this really like hard fact. I need to find my why and sew it into who I am. And man, that was a huge, huge, huge deciding factor in um, just allowing me to attack some challenges that I had wanted to attack. Uh, another reason for the why is I did the one epic run, which is a 24-hour race in, in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and uh, I got to the 11th hour and stopped for no reason. I didn't have a why. Like, I stopped for no reason. Yeah, my feet were cold. It was miserable, but I'm a, I'm harder than that. I'm, I wasn't injured. I wasn't hurting. Like, I was sore, but I'd moved 50 miles. But I stopped for no reason. I've thought back on that a lot, and I just didn't have a why. It was it was nothing else. And I think a lot of times we'll get out of the game because we don't have a why. It's not because we're not strong enough. It's not because we're not prepared. It's just we don't have a why, and there's no reason to keep going. Uh, like I said, I have multiple whys, um, and so. I'm just going to kind of be vulnerable here for a second uh, and kind of give you a few of my whys. Um, I have two young boys, and a lot of my whys go back to those young boys. A lot of those, those are the whys that are the last result because I don't want them to see their dad as a failure. And I know they're never going to, like running a 100-mile race and me stopping, they're never going to be like, Dad, you're a failure. You stopped at like 80 miles. What were you doing? That's not the case. It's a deep down thing that I am trying to show my boys. And it's my why. Uh, It's my I will not quit why. It's my why that is just so deep that, man, possibly broken bones won't break that why. So... What I have done is I've just taken and I've set up multiple whys. And, you know, it's it's just what I have done in failure prevention. Failure prevention. It's how I de- it's how I hardwire my default. I have put up these whys and if I can keep those, then my hardwired default of I'm not a quitter is it stays true, right? And so those are some of the basic things that I have done. Another thing is in setting your default is your mind is going to play tricks on you. It just is. I experienced this, the greatest in the Uari 100K, where my mind just, man, went crazy. On the second lap, I had went out way too fast. I was eating well, but um, I was getting nauseated, so I wasn't able to put in as much food as I needed. And so crap man on that second lap my mind went bonkers i mean i would almost say like partially hallucination like it was it was it went rampant i would be like almost physically crying and then like a rush of like happiness would wash over it's so weird and so 
from that, I took all that data. Like I, I remembered those. I banked that emotion. I got some food in me and everything changed. Everything changed. My muscles were hurting. I got food in me. My muscles quit hurting. My muscles started cramping. I got food in me. It went away. Now, I understand how fast the food got into me and the cramps went away. Your body does not work that way, okay? So, like, you should not be able to drink a little bit of drink and the cramps go away, like, instantaneously. It's not the case. It's your mind playing tricks on you. The mind does a great job of self-preservation. It does not want to endure pain. It doesn't. It will do everything in its power to block out pain. It will do everything in its power to tell you, you can't handle this, run away. You have a fight or flight mode. You have a fight or flight mode in your brain that is hardwired in, and it knows what it can take. Not what you can take, what it can take. And so it does not want to hurt itself. But the reality is, if you get up against that wall where your brain says you can't do it any farther... It's not actually a wall. It's not. I call it the false wall. It's almost like a curtain that is designed like a wall, but if you push on it, you realize, I could just go through it. There's been many times in my adventures and whatever I've done where I feel like I cannot go any farther. I can't. I am just to my limit, and... I find that that wall is no longer a real wall. I did this series called How Deep is Too Deep, where I just literally dug a hole and found out how deep I could go to where I reached the bottom and bonked. And still to this moment, I have not reached it. I haven't. I haven't gone to where I cannot go any farther. I have this hardwired into my brain that I'm not a quitter. So if that's hardwired in, and the idea of how deep is too deep, and I keep digging, and I keep digging, and I keep digging, well then, my hardwire overcomes my brain. I go back to that default mode of, I can keep going. Unless something is physically broken, I can take a step. I may not be moving at the speed that I want to, but I can go. I am attempting a 100-mile race in 2019. My goal is to attempt two of them. I honestly think that there's a ton of data that I don't know and in a whole world of unforeseen circumstances that I need to experience. And so that's why I say I'm doing two. Uh, The first one, um, I'm going into it with the goal of completing it, uh, but also to learn it. And the second one, there's no other option. I know that sounds cocky. I know it sounds... It's just what I have to do to my brain. I know there are options. I know there are. But for me, there are no other options. So uh, those are just some of the things to hardwire your brain. Um, In hardwiring your brain, there are patterns. And man, if you'll learn those mind patterns, it'll help you put up blocks to set that default. Um, You'll find that Certain foods may change the mood. They, they may do that. You may find that other moods darken the mood. You may find that relationships darken the mood. You may find that there are certain people that aren't pouring into you, uh, that aren't encouraging you. There are, you may find that some people make it easy to exit. Like record the data. Understand. I've got a few friends that I don't tell what my adventures are because they think I'm crazy. And they tell me, dude, why are you doing this? And at the last thing I need is for somebody to self-doubt and be like, yeah, Aaron, why are you doing this? I don't need that. On these goals and on these challenges and in life, you need people that sell you, oh, dude, yeah, you got this. There's no problem. And so here at the Suffer Club, I want you to know you've got this. You do have this. You may have to dig really, really deep at whatever challenge you're going, but I promise you, you have what you need. It's there. You may have to dig for it. It may take a season. This is not something that I have rolled into overnight. 
This is not a decision. Hardwiring, my default, was not something that just it just happened. It wasn't. It was a conscious decision day in and day out to be not a quitter, to give everything I had every time. And it's just over time come to be who I am. I will tell you that hardwiring, the path does get easier. It does. Making the decision, drawing your line, it does get easier. It just becomes the pattern The same way you do something just without thinking, the same way you grab your phone and check Instagram or check your social media feed, that's how, that's hardwiring and that's what happens to you. You can hardwire that decision of not giving up, of I've got more than this. So I just want to encourage you. That's what these podcasts are going to be about. They're going to be about encouragement. I want when you finish listening to this, I want you to feel like you can attack whatever is in front of you because I believe you can. So uh, at the Suffer Club, we always say that we will be proud of the results we get from the effort that we put in. That is the difference. We will be happy with the results we get from the effort we put in. That's us giving it everything. If I give it everything and leave nothing on the table, I can be proud of that. That's, that's the reality. I can be proud of giving everything I have. So give everything you have and be proud of it. So I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. It was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun, and we've got a ton of great people going to be on the show. I'm probably going to be the weakest speaker, so I'm going to try to get myself off of here as much as possible. But we have a ton of friends that have a massive amount of knowledge and we want to share it. So, hey, we hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share if you want. Adios.